Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro here. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how we can create a simple button in Java. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Your support will help keep this channel running. All right, my fellow human beings, let's discuss J buttons. A J button is a Java GUI button that performs an action when you click on it. We're going to be creating a frame and then adding a button to that frame. However, with this frame, it's going to implement something called the action listener interface. So I think it would be best to demonstrate this with a different class instead of using our main class with the main method. So let's create a different class. So file new class. I will call this my frame and we'll have my frame extends J frame. So my frame extends J frame. My frame will be the subclass of JFrame, so it will inherit everything from the JFrame class and behave exactly like a JFrame. So let's create an instance of my frame. So my frame, let's call this frame equals new my frame. And actually, we don't really need to give this a name because I don't think we're going to be doing anything else within this class. You can even just shorten that line to just new my frame and that'll work just fine. We're going to spend a majority of the time within this my frame class. So to begin, we'll need a constructor for this class. So my frame and to create a frame, we say this, well, to set up the frame, I should say, uh, we'll need these few lines of code. Instead of saying like frame dot set default close operation, it's just this. So this dot set default close operation, J frame exit on close. We're going to be using no layout manager. So this dot set layout to null, this dot set size, 500 by 500 is decent. And this dot set visible to true. So this should display a J frame now. All right, so let's create a button at this point. So it's very similar to creating any other component. So that's J button. Let's call this button equals new j button and then we will need an import too and then let's set the bounds for this button so button dot set bounds so we have x y width and height i will place this maybe where x is 200 where y is 100 for the width let's make this 100 and the height maybe 50. so then to actually display the button, we need to add this to our frame. So this dot add, what are we adding? We're adding our button. And let's run this. So here's our button. It currently doesn't do anything. So we need our class to implement the action listener interface. So implements action listener. So we're going to need to implement a method. The action performed method. So this frame will now listen for events. So one thing we can do, we can check to see if the event that occurs is our button. So we do that with if e dot get source is equal to our button. Then what are we going to do? All right, you can see one problem here though. This button is not global. It's only local within the constructor of my frame. So we can actually turn this into a global component. So what we need to do is actually declare this outside of the constructor, because right now, since we declared this within the constructor, only anything within the constructor has access to this. So we'll say J button button, and we'll finish instantiating this button within the constructor. And you can see that this error went away. So now what do we want to do when we click on this button? Let's just do a system.out.print line and I will print out the word poo. All right, so then when we click on this button, it performs an action. So if the action performed is equal to the button, it's going to do this. The button is going to poo, however, this button doesn't seem to be doing anything. That's because we need to add an action listener directly to the button. So button dot add action listener, and we can pass in this. 
since this class is implementing the action listener interface. So now this should do something. And now when we click on the button, the button starts printing the word poo. Now is the perfect opportunity for me to introduce something called a lambda expression. It's actually a shortcut that you can use in place of action listeners. So this is an advanced shortcut. I do have an entire video dedicated to this that you might want to watch at some point. So what we can do instead of implementing the action listener interface and instead of using the action performed method, when we add an action listener to this button, we can place a lambda expression here. And this is how to write one. We write E within the parentheses, followed by an arrow, and then what we want this button or other component to do. So let's just system.out.println uh, the word poo again, because we can. So poo. And when we run this, it does the exact same thing, just with less syntax. However, this is a more advanced concept. I do have an entire video dedicated to Lambda expressions if you're interested. Let's customize this button. Well, because we can. Because we can is actually a great reason for many things. So let's set the text for this button. So button dot set text. And then I will write, I'm a button. There's our text. So if you look at the uh, text for the button, there's this annoying border around the text. We can actually get rid of that. We need to set focusable false because the button is focusable. So button dot set focusable. And we're going to set this to false. So that should get rid of that box that's around the text of the button. Let's also increase the size of this button too. So I think I will make this 250 by 100. That should be decent. And let's move this over a little bit. I'll try and at least get this close to centering this. All right, let's add an icon too. So we'll need to create an icon. So this is an image icon. I'll call this icon equals new image icon. We're going to list the source for this. So I have a picture on my desktop I want to use. It's just a pointer finger basically. So this is point.png. And then we'll need to import as well. All right, so button dot set icon and we're setting this to the name of our icon which is coincidentally icon now i want the icon on the right hand side of the text so there's a method for that so what we're going to do is button dot set horizontal text position so j button dot let's say center i'm also going to change the vertical text position so button dot set vertical text position and this will be j button dot let's say bottom so the pointer finger should be in the center and above our text let's also change the font too so button dot set font and we can pass in a new font new font i will pick maybe comic sans then you can style this you can make this bold plain italic whatever i'll make this bold and then a size all right let's take a look All right, not too bad. I'm gonna pull the text in a little bit closer and there's a method to do that. So button dot set icon text gap. And I'm going to set this to a negative number to pull the text in closer. Negative 15 should do it. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's also change the font color. So button dot set foreground and I will pick 
maybe cyan. All right, all right. Let's change the background color now of the button. So button dot set background. And I will just pick maybe like light gray or something. Light gray. Okay, let's add a border. So button dot set border. And we can actually pass in a new border too. So border factory dot create and then pick a border that you want. I will pick etched border. And let's take a look. So there we go. It kind of has like a 3D effect. Oh, you can also disable a button too. There is a method for that. So button dot set enabled and set this to false. This will disable a button. And actually, if you want a button to be only clickable once and then it's disabled, you can put this within the action performed method. So if we were to do this, we could only click this button once and then it's disabled. So that's something that's an option to you. A feature that's available to you with buttons is that you can change components within a frame on a button click. Let's say that we want to display a label on our frame after we click a button. So let's create a label and we'll add this label to our frame. So we should declare this label outside of the constructor so that the action performed method has access to it. So J label, we'll call this label and we'll finish instantiating this within the constructor. So now label equals new J label. And I'll create an image icon. So I plan on using this image and I'm just going to add this to our label to demonstrate this. So let's create a new image icon, image icon. I'll call this icon too because just the word icon is already taken equals new image icon and this file name is face.png now we can set the icon for this label so label.set icon and the icon that i want to use is icon2 let's also set the bounds for this label so label.set bounds so i will place this where x is 150 where y is 250 the width will be 150 and the same thing with the height. So we can also set the visibility for this label. So label dot set visible. And I'm going to set this to false because I do not want this to appear at least right away. And then lastly, we need to add this label to the frame. So don't forget about doing that. So this dot add label. And then with the action performed method, after we click this button, let's set the visibility of the label to true. So label dot set visible true. So then when we run this and we click the button, our label is now visible. Well, that's how to create a simple button in Java. If you want a copy of all this code, I'll post all of this in the comments down below. But yeah, that's the basics of buttons in Java. Hey you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. If you learn something new, then you can help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.